Bruce with Natural Heat. This video about converting a hot water heater to a hydronic buffer tank will cover three main points. Dealing with the anode rod, replacing the four water fittings, and looking at the fitting for the electric resistance coil. So why would I want to change a hot water heater to a buffer tank? It's about a third of the cost. It's available at your big box store. I got this at Lowe's and it has the electric resistance coil that will allow you to run it as a backup heater. So it, it serves two functions for about $700. The first step in converting the tank was removing the anode rod. This serves to prevent corrosion when it's running as a hot water heater. In a hydronic system or a closed loop heating system, there's very little new oxygen that's getting mixed with the water, so corrosion of the tank is a minor issue. The anode rod is no longer needed. To get to the anode rod, there's a little cap with anode marked on it and it's foamed in place. You have to pick the foam out with a small screwdriver. And then the socket for the top of the anode rod is one and one sixteenth inch. And it takes a lot of force to remove. The tank is going to want to swing around as you try and undo it. So I needed to brace my knee against this while I used two arms on a breaker bar to remove that. It was the toughest part of the conversion. Once the anode rod is removed, it's a perfect spot for an automatic air eliminator. And that goes in, of course, with threaded, uh, with tape on the, on the threads of the threaded pipe. It's a four inch piece of pipe with three quarter inch tapered thread. You can get those pipe sections at a big box store for about $3 each. And that's the perfect spot for an air eliminator. There's about a four inch gap from the top of the pipe to the roof of the tank and bubbles will rise up and the automatic air eliminator solves that problem. The next fitting I removed was the pressure relief valve and that was with an adjustable wrench. It came off with modest force. Unfortunately, you cannot re reuse this in your hydronic system. The pressure rating of this is 150 PSI. The pressure rating on your hydronic system is 20 PSI. And then the next fitting I removed was the sediment valve and this is plastic. I was scared I was going to break the plastic. I had a adjustable wrench on the flats of the plastic and then a pipe wrench and then using two arms that came off with a lot of force. Got hot and cold. And these are three quarter inch pipes, but they have plastic inserts. This one I can barely fit my baby finger in. So a fair bit of restriction to flow on both of those. And they both needed a lot of force. I used two pipe wrenches so I could use two arms and they came out with a lot of force. The heat pump is controlled by a temperature sensor on the tank or in a, in a temperature, in a, pardon me, in a, a thermal well. And this thermal well is simply a dead end pipe that threads into a bushing. And the bushing then, that's a, a one inch tapered thread and that threads into the one inch thread of the electric resistance coil. Now that's a straight thread and this is a, tip, a tapered thread. So to get a good seal on that, and this is only 20 PSI, I'm using three or four turns with orange Teflon tape and I'm using Pro Dope. I've used this combination on old radiators that had pitted and worn threads and I was able to achieve a good seal 
with the combination of those two. And that is, oh, the coil uh, plug or the resistance coil itself comes off with a one and a half inch socket. This was the only tool I needed to buy to do this. It's about $16 on Amazon and uh, that pretty well covers it. I, I'm connecting my two and a half ton heat pump with one inch PEX to these three quarter inch pipe nipples. And if you're running a larger heat pump, you will likely need to, to use larger connections for a higher flow. That's it.